All right, Chris, we've been getting a lot of questions because we've just put out our complete solar video. People want to know all about the DC to DC charge, and you are the subject matter expert from this couple here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with I'm good enough. I definitely understand it. So timing is perfect for these questions because we've got a few add-ons to make to our system. So let's go ahead and finish the DC to DC, and I will walk you through everything you want to know about what we did. Awesome, that sounds great. Let's get to it. What do you got there? Your high horse. <laughs> I need to be able to get into the engine bay and that thing just happens to be the right height. So one of the things when we installed the DC to DC um, chargers is we ran out of wire loom. So this is wire loom. It's just a little split piece of plastic. It protects the cabling or the wiring to make sure that it doesn't rub and wear and get heat so it's just a good thing to have we need about six feet of this at most so i'm going to go ahead and install that right now to finish it and i'll walk you through what we did on the inside here on the dc to dc and then the rest of the truck and then the install on the trailer i love how chris has let me help him i'm the zip tie holder and the wrench i mean the oh, pliers and the pliers look at that look at you moving up in the world i know well Right now, I got the fun job of busting zip ties that I just put in like a week ago. But I, what are you going to do, right? You know, you have to wait on your parts to come in from Santa Amazon. You got no choice. So I'm busting the zip ties from the cabling. You can tell the difference. This is the cable that uh, we ran. You can tell it only has a partial wire loom on it. So I'm going to crawl up there. Try not to burn the snot out of myself because it is hot out here. Whoo! It is. It's a beautiful sunny day and we have a spot right on the water. Okay. I need something to get higher. This ain't going to do it. And let me guess, we don't have anything. Okay. It okay. went from my high horse to a rocking chair. And well, this is what happens when you travel too light and you forget to bring your step stool. I need to be able to get up here. This is all I've got. So hopefully I don't go through the bottom of this. <laughs> so the um, wire loom, not much to it. You just kind of fish it on through the splits. And then once I get it on, I will uh, connect it with zip ties. See, and that's where I come in to play. The queen of the zip ties. <laughs> yep. There we go. Obviously, I didn't buy the zip ties because they would be pink. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want pink zip ties on the Grizzly. The Grizzly doesn't want pink zip ties, Mrs. Peters. You shush your mouth. <laughs> 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 don't need that negativity. Right? Don't need all that negativity in my life. All right. So, yeah, needless to say, this is not a difficult process. But these are just the attention, the details, that, in our opinion misses and I that really make a difference. We want to make sure that we protect absolutely everything, both the truck and the Victron system, because you spend too much money on both, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and it's not a place to cut corners. No. So, you know, an extra 10 bucks to buy wire loom is absolutely worth it. And so what I did is I used the electrical tape just to combine the two wire looms. And I don't feel like I got enough tape. I probably did. And you guys are going to give me a hard time saying I overkill. But, hey, that's kind of my style, isn't it? Nothing wrong with that. Too much is just right. Now I feel better about that. And then I'll put zip ties over the top of that to uh, make sure that it stays as we go along. And then all I'm doing is routing the wire loom where it goes so that I make life a little bit easier on myself. Now I'm going to reposition. It would have been nice to have had the right length in the beginning, but hey, you know, how they say measure twice, cut once. Well, in this case, it was uh, measure twice, order once, but we didn't know going into it, and this is my fault, um, how we were going to end up wrapping the cabling through this. So we had to get a little creative, and I figured if we were going to have it at a point where we weren't going to be able to get the uh, wire loom all the way over all the wiring, that it would be on the side that we have full access to, not something that I had to crawl under the truck for, so that would have sucked. And when he says we, 
we actually enlisted and hired the help of Brad and Jamie from Flow, Faith Living on Wheels, RV Mobile Service. We did, and they do amazing work. They are amazing people. They're both Air Force veterans, so very near and dear to our heart, right, Chris? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of a fan of the military. Kind of like law enforcement, too, but y'all probably know that about me by now. <laughs> I didn't take the solar class. Uh, Chris and Brad did at the NRVTA, and it was a great combination of the two working together, and Jamie did a fantastic job. And... Well, if they've seen our solar video, shame on you if you haven't, but if you have, you also know we had one day to get this done, so we knew going into it, it was going to take everybody. But I'm truly grateful for Brad and Jamie. They just, they were a godsend, I'll tell you that, because I love doing these projects with you, Chris, but having someone that understands solar as much as you, or it's just, it's great great collaboration. So this is the heart of the DC to DC charger system. Uh, we got our, st our factory battery. So this is the battery directly from Chevy. And the nice thing is it's got lots of studs built into it, lots of uh, breakers and fuses built into it. But we chose not to do that. We went ahead and ran a uh, Bojack fuse here. So these are the mega fuses. And we ran two watt cables. So we ran it across here. And then you notice that we marked all three areas with red. So we're using black cabling from a blending perspective, but we wanted to put red heat shank. So there's no question whether or not these are hot. So that runs in here, comes across, and this lower piece here is the two watt cabling that we ran for the DC to DC charger. Now we ended up having to use more than we anticipated on <laughs> with this truck. So we didn't know going into it in a failure on my part for not looking in advance, but I didn't notice that we had to run across the entire engine bay, then down, and then back. And what we did is we, fo we followed the wiring that Chevy put in place so that we knew we weren't going to have any problems with temperature, we weren't going to have any problems with moving parts, and it made it really easy because there's already contact points to zip tie to. So it keeps everything nice and clean, and it looks like it's a factory install. That's always our our goal going into it is when it's done, you look at it and you don't even know it happened. So that's why all this is the way it is. But putting the wire loom on it just added protection for the cabling, the wire, so that we don't have to worry about it melting or rubbing or wearing. It'll just, and it looks just like everything else. So now that I fixed this, or I shouldn't say fixed, finished this and put the last, we'll say six feet of loom on, now we've got to do the exact same thing um, on the tongue of the trailer because we didn't have the one inch wire loom. So let's finish the walkthrough on the truck and we'll go over to the trailer and fix that. You saw that the wiring came straight across, then we went down and then we ran it along the frame rail of the truck and secured it as we went, both with the uh, wire loom, which you saw here, plus zip ties. And we had to go the full length. We actually had to pull out a fiberglass fish tube and run it across the top of a little bitty hole on the gas tank. That was probably the hardest section would have been right here because of the gas tank. So once we got it past there, then we came out to the back of the truck and accessing the back of the truck was fine. Finding a spot uh, to put the Anderson connector was a little bit of a challenge. So um, we had to find something that had a aluminum or sheet metal backing so that this could be firmly mounted. And I had to have it close enough that I could go between the seven way pin, which is the factory one, and in the Anderson connector. The nice thing comes with a little dust cover. I clean up back here. But so that's kind of how it went on the DC to DC for the truck portion. It was just running a two aught cable, the full length of the truck, and then making the connections at the back. If you have any suggestions on different types of accessories you can use with Anderson, let us know. We've heard recently that there's adapters and stuff, so you can use this for other things. So we will be able to charge or whatever. Let us know in the comments below if you have any accessories that you think we should add to our trailer or truck. Yeah, because we're still learning, going back, going from a travel trailer to a toy hauler to a fifth wheel and back to a travel trailer. Things change. <laughs> I think by now, if they've been following our journey, they know things change rapidly. <laughs> okay, so this is the other piece that we had to order. So this is a wire loom, but if you notice, this one is substantially larger than what we had on the uh, truck. So the reason is the Anderson connector has two 6 aught cables, and then you have the seven-way plug. So I need to get all three of these 
into one wire loom. And for the short term, we just zip tied them because we were waiting on Santa Amazon to deliver this. So now I gotta bust all the zip ties and run the wire loom. Let's get to work. Why is it always easier to take them off? Right, it takes 10 times as long to put them on and five seconds to take them off. But it's kind of like when you install something and you have to do it on both sides. The first one takes an hour, the second one takes five minutes. Same idea. I need a zip tie holder. Do you know of one? I do. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. See, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, so now that the zip ties are done, now we get to loom it. Get all this out of the way. The hard part on this is just making sure we stack the wires correctly. Because they need to be the same all the way through to make sure that, because see the loom will, ooh, barely fit. Thank you, darling. You're welcome, my love. So we got the electrical loom on, the wire loom. We went from electrical tape to zip ties and we repeated that pattern all the way through to make it one big giant chunk. So it's together. Now that that's there, let me show you why there's one wire coming out of the back or mainly running through the truck and then we split it at the end for the Anderson. And then we did the same thing here. We did a split inside here. Let me show you that. So inside the pass through, I'm gonna set this up for you. You will notice this right here. So this little distribution block, we have two aught cable coming in and then we're split to the six. So one in, two out. And that's because we have two DC to DC converters and we wanted to make sure that we ran um, as big as cable as we could everywhere that we can. We're trying to minimize loss here. Once we split the um, two wires, we actually used a wire feed or fish tape as I know it as, and we ran it um, through access holes through the belly so that we didn't actually have to drop the whole belly. We kind of made ports and we run the wire in, grab it, pull it through, open another one, put it up. That way we didn't drop the belly. We wanted to keep it as tight as possible. Then we ran into a hole that was already existing from the solar system straight into the DC to DC where all the batteries and everything else are. We wanted to go as short as possible, thick as capable as possible, because our goal is to try to get 30 amps at 24 volts or 60 amps at 12 volts. And so far, everything has worked well. As soon as we're done uh, setting up, we're going to take this on the road and we'll see how it pushes power. You saw in the pass through, we had the one two watt cable split into the two cables. Here's where they come in. So this is in our coffee bar. We've got the two coming off the back of the distribution block. We fused them here on both sides, and then we split them to inputs for the DC to DC charger. Here we go. So the wire coming down, tracking, going in here. We also have another one on this side. Same thing, the wire comes across, goes in, and then we did it with the red heat shrink, even though they're black cabling. So that is where everything terminates. From there, they go out of the DC to DC into the Lynx distributor. So into there. And that, of course, charges our Big Beard battery. So that is our DC to DC charging system end to end. You can see what we did. Um, not a difficult install, definitely time consuming. But if you're considering doing one, I'd highly encourage it. If you're going to spend the money on solar, a little bit of guaranteed power is probably a really good idea. I'm really excited and thrilled with how this project turned out because it means we can run the air conditioning while we're driving. Yeah, it really helps. It basically doubles the amount of power that we're getting because the roof doesn't always give you what it's rated for. You know, you both, 50 percent is about what we can expect. So um, not a difficult project, but it was a lot of fun. But it was a very, very long day. So for those that you have asked, now you've seen our DC to DC as well. Yeah. So let us know what you think down below in the comments. Did you know that's something that you could do? If you got better suggestions or you think we should add more? <laughs> let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed already. And most importantly, enjoy every moment.